Welcome to side two of this RCA Select Division video disc. There are two presentations recorded on this side. The first one is on band two. It's a tour of the RCA video disc player and disc manufacturing process. To access band two, you will press play when the next graphic appears. To access band three, you will need to press the band key, then zero, then three, and then seek. RCA Select Division Video Disc. To the average consumer, it begins right here with a player a TV receiver, and a CED video disc like this one. To the people behind the scenes, the people at RCA, it begins with raw materials as pure as those used in medicines, plus a myriad of parts and procedures. For some, it's this master videotape. For others, a disc begins with a stamper, the actual device which presses the disc. Actually, a finished disc begins with these pellets, one RCA video disc equals about two cups worth. And one finished RCA video disc player equals several thousand individual components and parts like these. And every component and part must be ordered, inspected, inserted, and assembled before inserting this disc into this player can produce the great home entertainment and information consumers expect it to deliver. And deliver it does. Over 96% of surveyed RCA video disc owners say the Select Division system is everything they expected it to be. Well, with that kind of expression of confidence in the quality and capabilities of this still new consumer product, it's no wonder the average purchaser of this player is also buying from 20 to 30 of these discs in the very first year of ownership. Well, in the next few minutes, we'll see how it all comes together. Now, we'll follow the uh, disc production process here at RCA Select Division facility in Indianapolis, and then we'll tour RCA's player assembly facility in Bloomington, Indiana. Oh, uh, you'll understand the reason for this lab coat in a moment. It's required dress if we're going to witness how the television information on this master one-inch videotape is transformed to the 12 miles of grooves cut into this copper video disc master. We're now entering the environmentally controlled area where all RCA video disc production takes place. See, this lab coat and cap help keep foreign particles like lint and dust to a minimum. Our master videotape has gone to mastering control. and We'll catch up with it in a moment. Right now, we have to prepare the copper master. It actually begins as this polished aluminum plate. But when it arrives in this room, the copper coating has already been plated over it. Now, the surface must be as perfect as possible. Smooth, flat, defect-free. A special barcode is added first. A similar code, like the ones you see on grocery products, is printed on the label of the disc caddy. Thank you. From this point on, this master is destined to carry a specific video disc program like the one waiting for us on tape in mastering control. As a final check, our copper surface is scanned by a laser for detection of any microscopic defects. And once the master passes this inspection, it is numbered and coded. Thank you. The mask prevents any breath moisture or a sneeze from landing on the copper surface. Now it's on to mastering control. 
Our master is being set up next door here in the cutting room. In the next few moments, the master recording will be cut. This control board tracks the program audio response. Now, if a little sweetening is required, it can be done right here. Stereo, noise reduction, and dual soundtrack or bilingual audio is also processed through this control unit. Now, program video is also monitored at all times, both visually and electronically. The master cutting has now started. This lathe is recording a frequency modulated, or FM, signal. Its diamond cutter is moving up and down three million times every second as it traces out that signal. And this is what's left over. 12 miles of continuous copper filament finer than the finest thread. And by the way, the lays are mounted on a floating suspension system. Just the slightest seismic disturbance could alter the signal cutting process. To give you an idea of the dimensions we're talking about, here's a groove mock-up 10,000 times actual size. These are the undulations of the signal the cutter is vibrating 3 million times a second to produce. The player's stylus rides in the groove and reads the signal as it passes over the peaks and valleys. In contrast to this, which recreates 10 video disc grooves, one groove in an audio record would be about, well, the length of this entire table. The next process in video disc production creates a stamper for the pressing of finished video discs. First, our recorded copper is used as a form for making what is called a master, then a mother or mold is formed from the master. And finally, the stamper for the is formed from the mold. This process is called electro deposition. Now, these nickel pellets are dissolved in a special solution and then formed onto the submaster as it spins in the bath. The stamper is then separated from the mold. Another critical operation calls for precise centering of the stamper and the punching of the center hole. The finished disc must rotate as a virtually perfect circle. Our stamper is now ready for the press. This is the press room. Our stamper and its companion side are now producing one disc every 40 seconds. Now, this shield helps create a controlled environment. Filtered air is circulated down from the top through vents in the floor. The pellets which make up the disc material, are automatically fed from the compounding room to this hopper. Then they're formed into shots, like this one. A heated shot is then fed into the press for stamping. The press disc is then automatically cooled, trimmed, and spindled. Sample discs are pulled regularly for quality control testing. Special playback units measure signal-to-noise ratios, count any defects, and rapid scan the recorded program to evaluate overall quality. If tested discs don't measure up, the entire press run will not arrive here, where both sides of each disc are inspected for any obvious surface flaws. Discs that pass are now conveyed through a series of washes and rinses, followed by a final rinse to expedite pass drying. When they reach this point, they're only seconds away from meeting up with this. Disc caddies must be prepared and labeled 
long before the discs that go into them receive their final rinses. The spine and the two halves of the caddy are clean before they enter the assembly line. Special strips are applied. They provide a dust seal and also clean the disc each time it's loaded and unloaded. The two sides are ultrasonically welded together and then check for disc and spine clearance. Now, the spine is what interacts with the disc player's load and unload mechanism. It stays with the disc inside the player. Well, our caddy now needs a label. It's automatically fed onto this machine and aligned by electronic eyes directly over a pre-glued label. From there, it's dropped through a special wrapping mechanism that folds and bonds the label to the caddy. Our caddy, complete with its new label, is now ready for a disc just like that. Now, labeled caddies are cataloged and stored until it's time for insertion of the disc press run. Right before caddy insertion, each disc is given a fine coating of oil on both sides to prevent stylus wear during playback. The disc is then lifted from the conveyor and placed onto the spine. And the barcode on the disc is read to be sure it matches the one on the caddy. Insertion is now complete. And our finished RCA Select Division video disc is ready for its shrink wrap. If it's a two disc album, the second disc meets the first one here. The two discs are then automatically wrapped together and labeled stereo if they need to be. Well, from here on, it's on to packaging, inventory, and order fulfillment. Some of the discs will make a separate trip through this product evaluation station. It's a final stage to help assure that the product the consumer receives measures up to RCA's quality standards. Now, the discs that are tested here must be passed before the packed and palleted press run can be accepted for order fulfillment. When RCA Select Division video discs enter this area, they pass from an environmentally controlled manufacturing system to a computer controlled inventory fulfillment and distribution system. Every accepted pallet of discs is logged in by this computer moments after arrival. It can respond with a specific shipping order printout almost instantaneously. As soon as discs are in inventory and orders are verified, the computer feeds the warehouse printer a complete shipping order. Short orders or small quantities of 10 or less are picked from this opened inventory and then conveyed to a packing station where the order is double checked. Once the order is strapped for protection, it's ready for pickup, usually by UPS. Quantity orders are filled by the pallet and wrapped securely on this special turntable. From here, it's a final check by the common carrier driver and a quick trip into the distribution pipeline. The ultimate destination is, of course, right here inside an RCA video disc player. As the old song about love and marriage says, you can't have one without the other. Here's our spine, the disc, and here's the tracking arm which carries the player's diamond stylus. Now here's how the arm looks before it goes into the player. And Here's how the player looks before it becomes one. Thousands of diodes, resistors, and other component parts, including some of the most sophisticated microcomputer chips available today. And they all come together looking like this. The RCA Select Division Video Disc Player. 
Now, the random access model has the capability of finding any one of several thousand images recorded on our disk. It even generates a time display on the TV screen plus additional graphics. And of course, it has to translate these groove undulations into a television signal, as well as into direct video and sometimes stereo audio signals. Remote control commands from this infrared hand unit must also be processed by the player, and the response must be instantaneous, which is why every diode and transistor is 100% tested before entering the player assembly area. Heat and cold stress tests make sure they measure up. Other tests check the geography of prefabricated parts. You see, every screw hole and assembly point must be in perfect alignment to ensure precision player operation. After inspection, individual components are automatically sorted onto a special tape reel. They have been placed in an exact order because in a few moments, they will be automatically inserted into this master signal processing board. It looks, reads, and is like an electronic roadmap. This machine is shaking these metal stakes into special positioning posts. The posts will then insert the stakes into specific slots on the board. Now, these stakes will serve as connector posts during the player buildup process. Once staked and riveted, our board goes to automatic insertion. This machine automatically places each component in its proper position. Now, once automatic insertion is complete, the boards are racked and then sent to the circuit board buildup line. Each station is responsible for the addition of specific components to the board. The next step is to secure them to the board. To do this, each board passes over a bath of liquid solder, which bonds the component leads to the board's metallic patterns. The end result looks like this, with all these components now fully integrated onto the board. And after just a few more steps, board buildup will be complete. Which means our master circuit board is now ready for its final pre-player assembly test and alignment. Any imperfection or faulty component detected here will send the board to a special troubleshooting station for closer examination. Boards that pass are now ready for the final player assembly process. We are now beginning tracking arm buildup. Now, the arm assembly is die-cast zinc. This precision boring device is making sure the assembly's fastening holes are exactly aligned. You see, the arm is a very complex device. It must house not only the stylus cartridge, but also the sensitive pickup electronics. When the arm reaches this final testing station, over 80 distinct components on three subsystem circuit boards have been assembled into it. Thank you. Now this too is ready for final player assembly along with our master signal processing board. The player's direct drive turntable is the last major component that we need. Now you see, this ring on the bottom of the turntable will actually become a component of the motor. The turntable must spin at precisely 450 revolutions per minute 
on a perfectly flat plane. So balance is critical. This operation dynamically checks and adjusts that balance. Now our turntable is ready to make its way to the final assembly line. Here it joins forces with the master processing board and the pickup arm. The turntable will be magnetized to allow it to operate with the motor drive system. Then its height must be set. The automatic loading mechanism must be assembled and the power transformer added. Not to forget this uh, very essential power cord. Now this final line procedure is called stop station assembly. You see, total player production is dependent on the speed of the slowest process on the line. Now, the player is conveyed on this special table with its own power outlet. This enables each player to be tested at several points during assembly. This troubleshooting station keeps a running log of any problems. The information gathered here can also be used to track performance standard trends. If a certain tolerance begins to waver, it may be time to make an adjustment at a previous production stage. Life tests are conducted separately. Sample players are taken from the line and brought to this room and subjected to 500 hours of continuous play. Well, this helps assure that all the components and parts will perform at the optimum levels expected of them. Each player's final quality check is conducted in this shielded room at the end of the stop station line. Color quality, picture stability, and of course, audio performance are all monitored here. With the next and final procedure, taking place right below. These are the finishing touches, the cover, the special labels, and the packing tabs, and of course, the owner's manual. And finally, the finished product, ready for shipping through the distribution pipeline. Some players, however, are in for a not too pleasant side trip. These two, for example, are about to be dropped. After a couple more hard knocks, the player is checked to see if it withstood the abuse. Well, it may not seem like a fair test, but it's an essential one. You see, an instrument like this, with the capability to retrieve and play back video and audio information stored on a device like this, must be designed, engineered, and manufactured to perform for consumers like no system they've ever seen before. And RCA has to be confident it will work as soon as it's removed from the carton and properly connected. To the average consumer, this is how it all begins. To the people at RCA, who you've just seen working to bring it all together, this is just about where the whole process ends. You've just exercised one of the advanced capabilities of the new RCA Select Division SJT400 Random Access Video Disc Player. You turned on your RCA video monitor and your SJT400 player, and you inserted the disc. And then you pressed Band, Zero, Three, and Seek. So, welcome to Band 3 of this RCA Select Division video disc. Well, if you don't believe that this is Band 3, Then, welcome to band five of this RCA video disc. See, band four carried the we don't believe you graphic you just saw. Now, to prove that band four is actually there, 
look at your remote control unit and find the key labeled program. Now, don't touch it, though, until I say so. Now, follow my instructions carefully. I want you to press the program key. Go ahead, press it. The on-screen display across the bottom of your monitor should read time or band, question mark. Now, press the band key. Go ahead. The display should now change to a series of dashes. Now, if there are any numbers visible, press the clear key. When you make an incorrect number entry, clear is the key to press. Now, your dashes should still be displayed, and the first one should be blinking. As you enter each number, the next dash in the series will blink. Now press 0 and 4. Now press 0 and 6. Your display should read 04 and 06. Now if it doesn't, press the clear and then re-enter 04, then 06. What we're going to do now is to go back to band 4 for a few minutes and then automatically skip this band and pick up band 6. <laughs> you don't believe it, huh? All right. Get ready. Find the seek key. When I say go, I want you to press the C key. Are you ready? Go. Welcome to band six. You've just completed a program band access. Before we go on, though, find the play key in your remote unit. It's right here. Now press it. The words exit program should appear on the bottom of your screen. We're now in the normal play mode as opposed to the programmed band mode. Pressing play during a programmed random access operation will exit your program. To begin this presentation, you executed a start band access. It's one of the five basic random access operations featured with this SJT400. Start time, program time, Program band and page access are the others, and we'll discuss them all in more detail later. The RCA Select Division SJT400 Random Access Video Displayer represents the latest advance in RCA CD technology. It uses the most sophisticated microcomputer chips available today. It can actually let you select any one of thousands of individual still pictures that might be recorded on a disc, or you can access up to 62 pre-recorded and coded program segments or bands, well, like this band, number six. But for all of its sophistication, for all of its incredible capabilities, this SJT400 remains remarkably easy to operate. Its basic features and functions are available in varied combinations with every model in the line. And every CED disc is totally compatible. Over 800 titles are presently available, and the list is growing constantly. And as it grows, you'll be seeing more programming designed specifically to utilize the 400's random access capabilities. The 400 is an instrument that's ready for the future of home video disc entertainment and information. But at the same time, its standard feature package makes it an ideal system for video disc right now. Welcome to band seven of this RCA Select Division video disc. Before we get into the 400's advanced random access capabilities, let's review its standard features. I'll be giving you a brief description of each feature and its benefit. When I change subjects, I'll change these cards to indicate that each feature has been recorded on its own band. And that way, you'll be able to access any one of them later on. One important SJT400 standard feature is stereo playback capability. The number of stereo CED discs is growing rapidly. Concerts and now many movies are being added every month. Stereo outputs are located on the back of the player. They must be connected to an external stereo amplifier speaker system or to a stereo capable television receiver or a stereo monitor like this RCA Select Division unit. The player automatically selects monaural or stereo playback. All stereo discs are enhanced by the player's 
CX noise reduction system. Disc loading and unloading with the SJT400 is power assisted and electronically controlled to help assure trouble free operation. And playback begins automatically a few seconds after the empty caddy has been retrieved from the player. The SJT400 features a direct video output, so it would be connected to a video monitor or a television receiver with a video input. Of course, there are also standard RF connectors for hookup to a regular TV receiver and antenna system. A channel 3-4 switch selects the correct RF output with automatic switching between the player's signal and the antenna signal. This digital display on the 400's front indicates elapsed playtime in minutes. It also displays a P when the player is in pause. L for load disk, UL for unload, and E for end of disk side. And A will be displayed when the player's antenna signal has been transferred via the remote control unit. These disk side indicators are also convenient. They automatically light depending on the side being played. Additional SJT400 on player control features include this reject key, which lets you stop play and remove the disc before it is finished playing. Pause play for stopping playback for a brief interruption. You press it again to resume playback. Forward and reverse high speed scan lets you scan program material at 120 times normal speed. Forward and reverse visual search scan the disc at 16 times normal. The audio AB selector is provided for dual soundtrack discs. Now let's take a look at some of the 400 special on-screen prompts and displays. They're designed to help make operation as simple as possible. Now, When you press the power key to turn the player on, you're asked to please load disc. When you press reject, it tells you so as the player cycles for disc removal. Then it tells you to unload disc. Now, when you reach the end of the disc, the player also tells you by generating this end side one or side two graphic. To review the other on-screen displays, let's now use the remote control. Now, so we don't lose each other, please don't press anything until I say so. Now, first, we'll go for pause. When I say go, press pause. Wait a second or two and press pause again to come back to me. Ready, set, now remember, you're going to press pause, wait a second or two, press pause again, remember. Right. Ready, set, go. Now let's call up another on-screen prompt. When I say go, I want you to press this key right here, the display key. Ready? Go. What you see across the bottom of your screen, on the right should be our current band number, 13. On the left is a running time display. Now you'll only see the band number when you're playing banded discs like this one. Play time will appear no matter what disc you're using. When I say go, press display again and the on screen will disappear. Okay? Go. Let's review the SJT400 random access features and functions. Now there are five basic random access modes of operation. Start time, program time, start band, program band, and page access. Start time access lets you select any time to the minute and second to automatically begin playback to the end of the disk side. Now, find the time key. It's over here. All right, get ready to press, okay? Go. Your display should now read start at dash, dash, colon, dash, dash. 
Now we're going to enter a specific start time using the digit keys, okay? Get ready to press 9. Ready? Go. You should see the 9 in the first position in your display. Now press Seek over here. Ready? Go. Not valid entry is across your screen. All right? Press the time key again, okay? Go. See, there are 60 minutes on a disk side, and we started to enter 90 minutes. Had we filled each of the positions after the nine, the player would have told us not valid entry, because there aren't that many minutes on a disk. It displayed not valid entry this time because we didn't complete entering the minutes and seconds of the point where we wanted to start playback. Now, let's make a valid entry. Your display should still read start at dash, 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 dash. If it doesn't, press the time key again. All right? Now, get ready to press zero, okay? Go. And zero again. Ready? Go. See how the blinking dash moves to show you your next entry position? Now press 3. OK. Go. And now 5. OK. Go. We'll access our start time of 35 seconds on this disk in a minute. Right now, I want you to press the play key right up here. OK. Ready? Go. Pressing play right after entering a random access command, like our start time, stores our command for use later. First, though, let's enter a start band access command, too. Now, as you've probably gathered by now, a video disk band is simply a specific segment of information on a disk, on up-and-coming concert disks, or on disks with different programs on them, like, uh, well, cartoons for the kids. A special code is added at the beginning of each segment when the disk is mastered. Our SJT400 player constantly reads and keeps track of the codes. Now let's enter a start band access command. We'll store it in memory like we've already done our start time command. First, we need to press the band key. Here. Are you ready? Go. Your display should read start band 03, which is how we began this presentation. The command information for each of our five basic random access modes is automatically retained in the 400's memory system until it's changed or the disk is removed from the player. We're going to change it now. Now, notice that the zero is still blinking, again telling us that this is where our first entry needs to be made. At this point, let's press the clear key. So the 03 will change to dashes. All right, ready to press clear? OK, go. Now I want you to press the band key again. Ready? Go. Our display reads start band 03 again, doesn't it? The clear key only erases numbers from the display. It doesn't clear the player's memory. Now, let's enter our new start band access band number. It's 15. All right, get ready to press 1. Ready? Go. Next, press 5. Ready? Go. Your display should now read start band 15. Now, and this is very important. Get ready to press play again, because we're going to store our start time command. Ready? OK. Press play. To be sure we're together for this next exercise, let's check our work. Press the time key. Ready? Go. The display should read start at 0035, and the first zero should be blinking. If it doesn't read 0035, then press 0, then 0, then 3, then 5, then play. 
Now let's check our start band 15 command by pressing the band key. Ready? Go. Start band 15 should now be displayed, right? If not, go ahead and enter 1, and then 5, and then press play. OK, you're looking at me and start band 15. Now I want you to press the time key again, because our start time axis is going to be our first exercise. Ready to press time? All right. Set. Go. On screen display, double check. Start at 0035. What you're going to do now is to go back to the video disc manufacturing section on band one of this disc. You'll see me talking, but you won't hear me, because for this demonstration, we're going to change audio tracks so you'll be able to hear my instructions for our second exercise. How do we do it? Well, we press the audio track AB selector on the remote. Right here. Ready, set, go. You should now be hearing my voice on audio track B, and the B indicator on the player should be lit. You should also be hearing music in the background. If you don't, and you're still in track A, and need to press the audio selector again and check to be sure that the B indicator is lit. Because of Selectivision video disc system and the SJT400 have dual soundtrack capability, we've been able to record my voice and instructions on selected portions of track B of this disc. We're now going to demonstrate the SJT400's start time capability. All right, find the C key. All right, ready to go to 0035 on this disc? You'll see the time display countdown and the band numbers change also. All right, set to press seek, go. We're now going to make a programmed time entry and a programmed band entry. These random excess features are designed to let you begin playback at a certain point on the disc and predetermine where you want playback to end. For programmed time access, you enter both a start time and a stop time. You'll be able to use this feature with any CED disc. Those discs which have playtime information printed on the caddy label will be immediately accessible for automatic start-stop playback. Okay, now let's begin our programmed time entry. First, we need to press the program key. Ready? Go. Our display is asking us time or band. We want time this time, so get ready to press the time key. Are you ready? Go. The display now shows dash dash colon dash dash to dash dash colon dash dash. The first dash should be blinking. We'll now enter our start time, which is 21 minutes, 15 seconds on the disc. All right, first press two. Ready? Go. Now one. Ready? Go. Now one. Ready? Go. Now, five. Ready? Go. All right, next we enter our stop time, which is 22 minutes and 30 seconds. Enter two first. Ready? Go. Now two. Ready? Go. Remember, if you press the wrong number, press clear to start over. Here's our complete start-stop entry in case you need it. All right, I'll wait a second so you can catch up. If everything's okay so far, we can complete our stop time entry. Three, ready, okay. go, and zero, ready, go. Now we need to press the play key to store our command for a bit, okay, ready? And go. Next, we'll enter a programmed band access command. 
We need to press the program key again, okay? Ready? And go. Now, there's our time or band question. This time, we want to press band. Ready? And go. You're listening to Audio Track A. If you have directly accessed this band, your display should now show a series of dashes with the first dash blinking. To complete this demonstration, please locate the audio AB key on your remote unit. Now, please do not press it until you see me point to the clear key and hear me say, ready, set, go. Are you ready? Set, go. This is audio track A. Instructions for this demonstration are on track B. Press the audio AB key on your remote unit. Well, here we are at band 16. It's the next band in our program sequence of bands 21, 16, and 22. Now we're going to use another random access feature, and I should be pointing to it soon. There we go, the memory key. Get ready to press the memory key and follow the countdown as it will appear on the screen. Press the word go, press the memory key. Don't press it until you see the word go and hear me say it. Countdown beginning at five. Now prepare to press memory. Four, three, two, ready to press memory key? One, go, press memory. If you remember, you pressed the memory key right near the end of band 16 before the 400 cycle to band 22 in our programmed band sequence. The memory key lets you mark any point of elapsed playtime on the disc for immediate replay. It tells the player to enter a start time access command 
that correspond to the exact second of your pressing the memory key. That way, you can continue viewing a particular program segment and automatically return to the replay point you selected by pressing the seek key. Think of it as an I want to see that again feature. Now, think about where you can find a similar convenience feature. The RCA Selectivision SJT 400 Random Access Video Displayer. For all the convenience and sophistication of its time, band, memory, and repeat access features, it has yet another capability that is sure to be utilized as more random access disks are produced in the years ahead. It's our fifth and last basic random access mode, page access. A CED video disc page is actually a sequence of eight still pictures played continuously. Each of these pictures is called a video field, and one complete evolution of the disc contains eight video fields. When the SJT400 is in the page mode, it is playing eight consecutive fields repeatedly on discs designed specifically to utilize the page feature, like catalog or information disks, each of the eight fields will carry the same still picture information. You enter the minutes, seconds, and sixtieths of a second to access a specific page on the disk. We have recorded some demonstration pages on this disk. They're the five Selectivision video disk players available in the RCA line. You'll see them flash by in a moment. Then a graphic will appear to tell you what keys on the remote you'll need to press to access them. Your player will automatically stop, so you'll have time to make your entries. And I'll see you with a final wrap-up on Band 19. You've just completed the last of the RCA Selectivision SJT400's random access operations. As you saw, when you're in the page mode, you can access a previous page by pressing the Prev key and a next page by pressing Next. Well, just like you can access previous and next bands when you're playing a banded disc. Needless to say, the applications and possibilities for interactive use of page access alone are mind-boggling. Fortunately, though, I think we've just proved that it isn't very mind-boggling when it comes to random access operation. There's an ultimate simplicity designed right into the system. It makes the 400 perfect for the interactive disks that you'll be seeing in the months ahead. And even better, right now for the hundreds of RCA titles designed to provide you with good old basic home video entertainment. And I think you'll now agree that the RCA Selectivision Random Access Video Disc System is absolutely incredible. Page access for selecting any one of thousands of still pictures recorded on a disc. Programmed Band access, we're playing up to five individual program segments in any order with automatic repeat, if you like. Programmed time access, we're playing from a specific start time to a stop time, also repeatable, as is start band access, from the beginning of one band to the end of the disc side. And start time access, from a specific time on the disc to the end. Well, you see something you'd like to uh, replay later? Well, mark it with the memory key. Well, would you just like to look around, well, use, scan, or search, forward, or reverse, with playtime and band numbers in the on-screen display to help you out? Uh, like to hear what's on the other audio track? Well, here's that key. And of course, if your program's in stereo, you'll hear that automatically. Providing, of course, you're plugged into an amplifier system or stereo capable TV or monitor. All these features, all these incredible capabilities 
and incredible performance characteristics in one incredibly compact and incredibly economical home entertainment and now information system. The SJT400 random access player represents a giant step forward into the future of home video. It's a system for today and tomorrow. And because it carries the name RCA on it, it provides yet another opportunity to bring the future of home video into thousands of American homes. The Selectivision SJT400 is fully compatible with RCA's revolutionary Digital Command Center remote control system. This unique control center is available with all RCA Selectivision video monitors, selected RCA ColorTrack 2000, and design series television receivers, and RCA projection TV models. It's specifically designed to operate virtually all RCA monitor or TV functions, plus all the incredible random access and basic feature capabilities of the SJT400. And in addition, it can operate certain compatible RCA VCRs, like this VJP900 convertible model. Oh, uh, there's even a nice $50 rebate involved. Once the customer purchases an RCA Digital Command Center monitor or television receiver, he can get $50 direct from RCA if he has purchased or does purchase an SJT400 random access player. The RCA Command Center system is an incredible advance in home video technology and design. It's the future of video and then some. The RCA Selectivision Random Access SJT400 video disc player brings that future even closer. And to think, you had an opportunity today to hold that future right in the palm of your hand. Welcome to Band 21. We're now beginning repeat of our programmed band sequence with this audio voiceover on track A of the disc. Since you've now seen how the SJT400's automatic repeat function works, you're ready to exercise yet another of the 400's random access capabilities. It's called next band access. Whenever you're playing a programmed sequence of bands, like you're doing now, you can automatically cycle the player to the next band in the sequence by pressing the next key. It's on the bottom row of keys on your 400 remote control center just below the clear key. Take a moment now to locate the next key. Now don't press it though until I say so. Whenever you're playing a banded disc like this one, pressing the next key cycles the player to the next band. If you're in a program sequence mode, like we are now, you'll go on to the next band in the sequence. If you're in any normal or timed playback on a banded disc, pressing next will let you go immediately to the next numbered band. Pressing the preve key over on the left cycles the player to the previous band on the disc or the previous band in a program sequence. We're now in a programmed band sequence mode, repeating play of bands 21, 16, and 22. You're going to press the next key, so you should go to band 16. Let's do it. Get ready to press the next key. You set? Now you should end up at band 16. Set to press next. Go.
Now we're at band 22, or the last band in our program band sequence. This is audio track A of band 22. The SJT 400 has repeated the programmed band sequence you entered earlier. Now, get ready to press the C key to execute the memory replay access you just entered. You will be going back to the end of band 16 and continue play into band 17. Prepare to press seek. Ready, set, go. If you hear this music, it's where you should be. If you don't hear music and the A indicator on your player isn't lit, press the audio key again. Music and me. This is track A. We're now approaching the end of band 22 and are about to repeat our program band sequence by automatically returning to band 21. Be talking to you there.